Welcome back to the Man Art Gallery's virtual programming this week. My name is Tia Furstenberg, I'm the registrar here, and I'm also your host for the Secrets of the Vault series, where I pick one of the artists that we have in our permanent collection and share some of their artwork. So I'm excited to bring you the seventh video this week. If you haven't seen the other six, they are on the Man Art Gallery's Facebook page and YouTube channel, so I recommend you go check those out. There's also some wonderful art appreciation videos by our acting director curator Lana Wilson and then also some fun art creative projects by our acting educator Danny Castle. So go check those out. I'm sure you'll like them as well. Today I'm excited to bring you three artworks by this artist behind me. We have 74 of their pieces in our permanent collection and most of them are drawings and prints. So you can expect some of those today. This artist was born in 1953 in Arborfield, Saskatchewan, and lived in Prince Albert and Saskatoon most of his life. And then he passed away in Nipawin just this last year on August 15th. So without further ado, let's check out some art by Alex Mully. This is the first piece I'm gonna share with you today. It's titled Le Chat, is mixed media on paper and undated. Most of the pieces that we have of Alex's are either intaglio or woodcut prints. So this is a great example of an intaglio print or just a fancy way of saying etching print. So it's just as it sounds, Alex would have taken a metal plate and just engraved whatever design or artwork he would have wanted to then roll up with ink and run through the press. So this one is neat in that he has also used oil pastel on top to create that sketch of the cat and then title it and sign it with his initials there as well. You can see I picked this piece because it bridges both Alex's printmaking and his drawing. So they come together quite nicely. I also noticed that the cat is sort of a motif in some of his pieces. There's a few other ones where he's written a little journal entry at the bottom of a line drawing of a cat. And so it could be that this is that same cat that was living under the shed and then eventually made his way into Alex's home. And where Alex notes that the cat liked food, so milk and bacon and deboned meat, and she liked to rest beside him on the bed and didn't like being put outside, so that's kind of uh, humorous. Lots of Alex's pieces have that sort of undertone of his, his humor, and he didn't, didn't take art too seriously, and you can really tell especially in this piece. This is the second piece I'm going to share with you. It's titled Who Was E.A. Rawlingson? It's a woodblock print on paper and dated for 2017. This is one of quite a few woodblock prints that we have of Alex's in the permanent collection. I think it's safe to say that he really enjoyed this style of printmaking and it was his favorite. He returned to it a lot throughout his artistic career. I picked this piece because it has some local relevance to the community of Prince Albert. For those of you who don't know, this is the E.A. Rawlinson Center that Alex has depicted. And for those of you who are also curious, who was E.A. Rawlinson? I can tell you that he was a pioneer Canadian broadcaster, a Prince Albert community leader, and a founder of Rolco Radio. So now you know. <laughs> we are actually fortunate to have the woodblock that Alex used to create this piece. So as a little bonus, I thought I would share it with you as well. Ta-da! Isn't this cool? It's almost like a sneak peek behind the Who is E.A. Rawlinson print. You can see that Alex has carved away at all the areas that he 
wants to remain white so that's the contour of the building and all those important parts and he's done so by engraving or etching away with the grain because that's the easiest way to do it and you run into less trouble and then he selectively placed those three colors so blue for the sky and then the brown and gray for the building and the roof You'll also note that this piece is actually the mirror image of the print and that's something you have to keep in mind when etching is that it will print the opposite. I hope you enjoy that little caveat. Before we move on, I just want to give a brief history on the woodcut because Alex does keep it in mind, especially in this piece. So this piece is done on cougar paper, which is not a very high quality paper and it's typically used when an artist is doing proofs or you know doing the trial and error portion of the printmaking process so it's interesting that Alex has chosen this paper to present a final print and in a 2016 letter to the director curator of the Man Art Gallery Alex notes that I have the intention of cheap woodcuts on common paper which were the original impetus of European woodcut. And he says that because in the 15th century, woodcut became really widespread throughout Europe. And it was because paper was being made in Europe. And so lots of people could have a print of an image or a piece of text. And so they became really accessible to the majority of folk and so Alex is referencing that through this print and lastly is this piece it's untitled abstract charcoal and Conte on paper and also undated apart from Alex's prints are also his drawings so we have quite a few of these Conte and charcoal pieces done on paper. They all follow sort of a similar fashion in that they're done monochromatic. This one's a bit of an anomaly because it has some, some touches of that yellow, golden yellow in there, but most of them are done in, in mostly black. And there's a real emphasis on line and shape in the pieces, not so much shading and being concerned with volume of a piece but this one is to me almost a landscape it looks quite abstract at first but as you spend time with it it starts to reveal more of itself and give you a hint of what it's all about so i personally in the background those balls of white dots of white in the back are almost lights and then the middle ground is a river that's reflecting the lights hence the elongated shapes of them I really enjoy the fact that Alex didn't use a black piece of paper to start out his night scene but instead there's he's used a white piece and then really darkened it with that charcoal and that in itself just creates more life in the piece it adds a bit more depth especially the whites are brighter and so it's really effective in creating a bit more dynamic and interest for the viewer and that's all i have for you today thank you so much for joining me as i shared a bit about alex Mully. I hope you learned something new. If you have a favorite piece that I talked about or another comment or question, please leave it down below and I'd be happy to respond. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Enjoy the sunshine and I will see you next Thursday, same place and same time.